So I get the question a lot, how does switchgrass do in the winter? So for those of you that follow my page or my channel on YouTube, you know that I live in Minnesota. So we really test switchgrass as far as what it can handle in the winter. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to show you a few different varieties of switchgrass, show you how they're doing today. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about why I still plant switchgrass because you're going to see that uh, the results as of right now, the end of December, uh, leave a lot to be desired. So let's go take a look at those and then we'll talk about why I still plant switch. All right, so this is some third year cave-in rock and you can see it is folded over pretty good and you're gonna, you're gonna sense a theme as we look at the other two varieties. So we got, we got ice, and then heavy snow right after the ice in early December of this year. So this was, I've, I'm five years in on planting switchgrass on the farm. This is the earliest the switch has gone down for me. So it was early December and down goes Fraser. It was down for the count and I don't expect this stuff to pop back up until mid to late March, maybe early April once the snow starts to melt. But the issue with the ice is that we got a lot of that too. So. This is probably not going to do what it normally does and spring back up the, the way I would expect it to in the spring because the ice snapped a lot of it off. So some will come back up, some's going to stay down. Um, the ice really did do a number on the switchgrass. So cave and rock, third year stuff, down for the count. All right, here's some third year real world. And I am definitely having a real world experience with it because it too is folded over and there's a lot of snow on top of it. So early December, went down the same time as the other stuff and it looks like I won't be seeing it again until, like I said, late March, early April. And there's the, I think it's fourth year Shawnee actually, and that as well is buried underneath the snow. So you can see the, the switch didn't hold up great to the uh, that winter elements of Minnesota. So why still plant switchgrass? Why do I still plant switchgrass? Well, uh, on average, switchgrass probably gives me about eight to nine months where it's standing throughout the year. And my main application for switchgrass on the farm is for screening. So generally, switchgrass can get me to December. Uh, I haven't had a year where it's gone down in November. We've had some October and November snows, but it's always been warm enough afterward. If it did fold over, it popped back up fairly quickly. So I love it for screening. Um, I like layering my screening. Uh, one other guy that I hear talk about this a lot is Jake Blow, the Habitat Pro. Uh, he actually lives probably 45 minutes from me, so we're dealing with a lot of the same stuff here. But uh, yeah, he uh, he talks about layered screening a lot, and I do the same thing. So my areas where I do have screening, I always kind of have a backup in mind. I got my switchgrass strip. If it happens to go down, there's a good chance I'm doing some edge feathering there, and I may have some added spruce in there too. I mean, there's spots where I literally have three levels of screening. Um, for the deer so if the switchgrass does happen to go down early uh, i have another option to to screen so that's that's one thing we can use the switch so the other reason that i plant switchgrass is for um, structure in some of my old field areas as far as bedding goes now you may ask why plant something that's not going to hold up to the full 12 months. Well, I plan it because I want to have as many diverse bedding options on this farm as possible. And I plan it because I have the space to plant it. If I had, you know, an 80 acre piece that was fully timbered, I would never be clearing, you know, one acre spots out to plant switchgrass. Um, that is not the type of situation you should be planting switchgrass bedding in. Uh, we have a lot of open ground on our farm that we want to add some bedding structure to. And switchgrass is easy to establish quickly. Um, it can give you cover within the first couple of years. Uh, so that's why I add it out there. But even in those areas, I'm looking to add a lot of other uh, components to it. I want to get some of that 
woody regen going. Eventually I'll probably be adding some, or I have been adding spruce in some of those areas. Um, I'm looking for lots of diversity. The switchgrass mainly is for something them for the deer to bed up against uh, in those bedding areas. And I plant it knowing full well that it will eventually go down. But the thing is, normally when the switchgrass goes down, that's when the deer are shifting out of those type of bedding areas anyway, and they're looking for those good thermal cover areas that they seek out in the winter, be it spruce, um, swamps, um, sometimes the back of uh, like a self-facing slope, um, but mostly on our farm, it's it's like the conifers and the, uh, the swamp is where they're seeking uh, when the weather gets nasty. So I know that the switch is gonna go down eventually, but it still gives me some bedding structure. It can last through most of the deer season um, and help me to transform fallow areas quickly into bedding structure. So if you live in the north, should you plant switchgrass? Uh, well, you just got to look at your situation and what works best for you. Um, I think there's always applications for screening, um, but like I talked about, adding different levels of screening to that screening or layers of screening to that screening is, is good. It's a good practice because eventually that switch may fold over uh, during the deer season and then you're out of screen. Um, as far as bedding goes, it just depends if you have lots of open acres on your property and you want to add some structure to them by all means add switchgrass, but you should definitely be doing uh, other things to promote bedding, as in working in the timber, uh, adding thermal bedding with conifers, um, and just, just so you have a lot of diverse bedding options for the deer. Uh, don't rely on one type of bedding structure. So take a good honest look at your situation. If it seems like it's a good option for you, use it. Um, if it, it doesn't seem to be an option that uh, would work well on your farm, don't use it. So. All right, you all take care. God bless.